visual on Dragon uh, looking at the spacecraft once it arrives on that docking axis. So again, that'll be um, once we're past waypoint zero and up on waypoint one, just making sure that everything looks good and aligned. And then really just monitoring the, the flight computer's vehicle state and what the range is um, as it continues to fly in. And again, he's doing all of this. There are no people on this Dragon able to take control. Um, so the crew acts as an additional uh, person in the loop to send commands to the spacecraft if required, if we need to tell it to abort or to hold at any point, either with an issue with Dragon or if we have any issues on the station side. And there's several steps that happen uh, on the station side just to get ready for a Dragon spacecraft, um, the different console positions here in Mission Control Houston responsible for essentially commanding and flying the space station um, and they're doing everything from configuring solar arrays to be in a specific orientation just to uh, make sure they're not getting any uh, excess plumes from Dragon's thrusters as it flies in um, and then the the ADCO position here in Mission Control Houston has some very specific steps to take with attitude control um, so once we get into uh, the the docking part of today's mission will be entirely controlled on the U.S. side, so we use four large gyroscopes essentially um, called CMGs or control moment gyros. Those are what uh, are spinning at an extremely fast rate, um, and we use those to actually help maintain and control the attitude of stations, so which way it's pointing really. Um, and our two primary means of control are... We see pry range decreasing through 700 meters. Attitude looks good. Dragon is pointed at station. Copy all. Sounds good. So Woody Hoberg giving a quick all down. So pry range, primary range, less than 700 meters. Um, attitude, as, as he described, pretty self-explanatory. Dragon is pointing. We're looking straight at the nose cone of Dragon right now. Um, right down towards the top of it. So it's pointing at hu at the space station itself and it's going to continue to maintain this attitude even as it swings up and out in front as again you're using some navigation sensors located at the very top part of Dragon um, to essentially do uh, we're, we're essentially bouncing lasers off the space station back and forth between Dragon to give it um, a lot of very valuable real-time data like just how far away it is um, that's your range uh, and then how quickly it's either flying towards or away from the space station that's your range rate so you're you're going to constantly hear a call out of range um, all of all of the sensors given that data out in meters and a range rate and that's going to be given in meters per second and since we're approaching um, that shows up as essentially a negative value for everyone in our telemetry um, but that's just telling you how quickly Dragon is closing in. And that's a relative velocity is um, both Dragon and Station traveling relative to the Earth at uh, more than 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, but the relative velocity between the two will be fairly slow um, once we hit that final uh, approach and docking we'll be moving typically around or just a little bit below a tenth of a meter per second so it's going to be pretty slow and methodical crawl once we're up on the docking axis towards that docking itself which should be coming in about 46 minutes from now but next major milestone is going to be hitting waypoint zero 400 meters below the station and we are just at nine minutes away from that expected time
Houston station on two for Dragon docking monitor. Go ahead on two. Hey, Nicole, we're showing no video right now. Can you just confirm that's expected? And yep, we can confirm that is expected. Uh, we are waiting until we switch the data rate and then we'll be able to get that video. Okay, station copies, thanks. And again, a quick exchange between Woody Hoberg, who's prime for monitoring Dragon's approach from on board the space station, and the Capcom down here in Houston, Nicole Lewis. He was referring to no video. He's talking about getting video feed from Dragon itself as it approaches. And the team here uh, in Mission Control Houston confirming that that's expected, and we'll get that once we essentially switch to a higher data rate in our connection between station and Dragon. Um, once Dragon gets this close, we're essentially communicating with it on something called C2V2. It's common communications for visiting vehicles. Uh, that's a common control scheme that we use across a fleet of different spacecraft that now fly to the space station uh, and dock to the US OS side. So all of the, the docking ports on um, either node two or the berthing ports on node two and node one. And that allows us to essentially transfer data back and forth between the two spacecraft um, and also use the space station's uh, downlink system um, through the Tetra satellites to also uh, get video not only to the crew on board station, um, but that serves as an additional command path to get uh, Dragon data down here to the teams. Uh, once Dragon is docked to the space station, um, it'll essentially switch off all of its transmitting antennas and move to using station systems. That'll happen once we get docked and get umbilicals deployed, um, those will start to provide power and data to Dragon using those station systems. So um, Dragon has its own solar arrays, its own batteries on board that it's able to, to charge uh, and power all of its systems throughout free flight. But while it's docked and goes into what's known as a quiescent mode, um, we're able to essentially power down those different systems. Uh, and just plug Dragon into uh, the station's much larger ones. So it'll essentially become an integrated piece of the space station while it's docked, um, able to draw from those large solar arrays to power its systems on board, a lot of which get powered down um, once we are docked, uh, but also, again, be able to, to use the station's different uh, data downlink systems um, to continue to feed telemetry from Dragon down to the ground. Uh, we also integrate the cabin atmosphere of Dragon with the rest of the station stack itself. Um, so it essentially becomes almost like another module uh, for the time while it's docked. It'll install uh, ducting just to make sure we have just an active feed of that atmosphere as as any time you're, you're operating in a microgravity environment, you don't have that natural convection. So we have basically active air handlers just pushing air through the station um, to make sure you have that circulation uh, That's so you're able to uh, constantly scrub carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, make sure you're distributing oxygen, things of that nature. So uh, the crew will, once they get the hatches open, um, initiate a lot of that work uh, and then it's going to be pretty much immediately cargo unload duties um, for the crew. So as of this moment, we're about 450 meters dragging away from the space station, expecting to be at waypoint zero in less than four minutes. After we pass through waypoint zero, Dragon will start to swing up, out, and out in front of the space station until it hits a point just about 220 meters. Uh, and we'll again stay outside of that keep out sphere. We're already inside the approach ellipsoid. Um, and then the team will do a going to go to proceed past waypoint one onto waypoint two before we even get to waypoint one. As again, the expectation is we'll be able to move through each of these waypoints without holding as long as everything continues to look good on Dragon and on the station side.
and we're just continuing to hear some updates that everything's still looking good with Dragon. Again, it's um, primarily navigating right now using those Dragon Eye systems, uh, which rely on a couple of different sensors. Uh, one of them, LiDAR, a laser range finding, um, essentially bouncing a laser off different reflectors on board the station to give immediate real-time data to the flight computer of just distance away from station uh, and also that range rate. Again, we're, we're constantly looking at just how far and how quickly it's approaching um, to just to make sure we're, we're following the expected flight path. Um, we're going to hit waypoint zero in a little less than two and a half minutes and then start to swing up to waypoint one. Everything continued continuing to run about 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Originally we were looking at a docking at about 6.52 a.m. Central Time, but we're now looking at that just 40 minutes or so from now uh, at about 6.28 a.m. Central. So we could hit there sooner, uh, but uh, everything continuing to run pretty smoothly so far with the, uh, the approach and docking. We are coming up less than two minutes away from waypoint zero, and then Dragon will be ready to move on to waypoint one. We'll see it swing up and in front of the space station. And we are less than a minute away from waypoint zero. And go ahead on two. Hey, Tommy, looking for your go on stop 10.1 for MH uh, unit removal. Stop, uh, yeah, 10.1. Yes, Frank, uh, you are go at step 10, this small one, and still can meet you on uh, space round three. All right, thanks so much. And it should be just about 10 seconds away until we pass waypoint zero. It was NASA astronaut Frank Rubio who's off working on a couple of different science items. Um, he will join Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen, uh, as well as Sultan Alniadi with um, some cargo transfer operations with Dragon a little bit later in the day. And confirmation, we have moved past waypoint zero. Next up is going to be waypoint one, so we're going to see Dragon uh, now start to not only get closer, but start to swing up and out in front of the space station itself. Uh, the crew is going to continue to monitor throughout this process. They're just still making sure that Dragon uh, essentially keeps a range outside of that keep out sphere really they don't want to see it approaching closer than a little less than 200 meters away uh, but it's going to stop at a point directly in front of the station at about 220 meters so we're still maintaining that distance outside of the keep out sphere so you've got teams here in houston watching the the systems on board dragon you've got the primary dragon team out at mccx and hawthorne controlling the systems uh, but again, Dragon largely flying itself. Uh, and then we have Woody Hoberg as Prime on board the station monitoring Dragon during. All right, so we're a little, we're about eight and a half minutes away from Dragon heading waypoint one. Again, that spot is about 220 meters ahead of the station. It's about 300 meters away. On two ranges, 318 meters, vehicle mode, transition to docking access, attitude remains as expected. Copy all. We're configuring for six meg now, so we should see video soon. Excellent. We'll be watching. And you heard a call out from Woody Hoberg again. He's on board the station monitoring Dragon. 
as it continues to swing up. Uh, this bull dragon in the station about to make a pass right over the central part of the Indian Ocean. Uh, dragon just about 7 minutes, 45 seconds away from waypoint 1. It's going to continue until it's just 220 meters approximately straight in front of the space station uh, and then begin to proceed on to waypoint 2, uh, just about 20 meters in front of the station. Uh, we also heard uh, a call out of um, stepping up to a 6 meg, so that's just talking um, the, the speed at the data connection between Dragon and the space station itself, and that's going to allow us to start to uh, bring video from Dragon itself uh, both into uh, the station for the crew to monitor, uh, but then also hopefully down to us here on the ground. So we'll see, in addition to these different views from the space station itself of Dragon's approach, uh, we'll see uh, some views of Dragon looking back at the station. Uh, again, the primary mode of navigation right now is using those Dragon eyes, so using LIDARs um, for Dragon to essentially get real-time uh, range and range rate information uh, just telling it how far away it is from the station. Station Houston on two. Uh, Houston and Station are go for Dragon to approach to 20 meters. Station copies. And so as promised, now getting views from a centerline camera on Dragon itself, looking back at the station. And we're going to be lining up just on the docking axis, about 220 meters away from the docking port on the forward end of node 2. We'll be getting there in about five minutes. And we just heard the Capcom Nicole Lewis call up to the crew that everybody here in Houston, um, the joint teams have uh, given the go to proceed into 20 meters. So that'll be at waypoint 2. And that's the final waypoint that we hit before uh, we actually hit docking. Now, typically, we'll pause at waypoint 2. It uh, can be a very short pause, or if we have to work any issues, um, we can hang out at waypoint 2 for an extended period of time before Dragon moves in for that final approach and docking. I'm not tracking any issues on the vehicle, though. No issues on the station side, so everything continuing to move about 20 minutes ahead of the timeline. Expected to be just a little over 17 minutes away from docking. We're still targeting uh, right around 6.28 a.m. Central Time, uh, but we'll get you an exact point uh, once we make that initial contact and capture uh, so in a little over four minutes, Dragon's going to hit waypoint one, and it'll be 220 meters away from the space station itself. And we've already given, uh, the joint teams have given their go, and Dragon will proceed immediately through waypoint one and begin approaching the docking port. And it's going to, again, hit waypoint two, so it'll be just 20 meters away. Waypoint two is when we do our final alignment with the docking port. So we'll be uh, essentially in in a in a specified range of that docking port once we hit waypoint one, uh, but we don't worry about doing the real fine tuning of that approach until we're only about 20 meters away. That way you're not uh, kind of burning excess prop that you don't have to um, since you're going to be needing to do that final approach anyway. Um, the crew on board has essentially a corridor, so they'll have um, and this is a view of what uh, Woody Hoberg is able to see. Um, this is an overlay that he has on a laptop on board the space station using that centerline video uh, and getting a couple of different data points. Um, one of the things to pay attention to at the very top, you can see uh, getting from those primary sensors the range and the range rate. Again, that's telling you how far away Dragon is and how quickly it's approaching. Uh, but we are just about three minutes away from waypoint one. 
after which we're going to start drag seeking dragon just fly closer so we're going to cross that keep out sphere area and start to approach until we're just 20 meters away and then just before we get to waypoint two uh, which is that 20 meter away uh, area uh, the teams will do kind of their final go no go for docking um, where we're essentially saying everything continues to look good on Dragon, everything's ready on station for the vehicles to dock, and then Dragon's going to autonomously fly itself in. We'll do the final alignment with the docking port once we hit waypoint two, and then Dragon will start to slowly approach. It's going to be moving at about tenth of a meter per second, maybe a little bit less, as it closes in those final 20 meters. Um, just uh, a little before, about 25 seconds before, we'll hear the Capcom call up CHOP. That stands for Crew Hands Off Point. That's just telling the crew not to send any commands at that point in that very final couple of feet uh, or meters before Dragon docks anything. Any aborts at that point have to be uh, commanded autonomously by the vehicle itself. Uh, but Dragon's going to fly in. It's going to make that initial contact and capture. Um, so Dragon has a docking ring uh, that's extended. It's going to essentially uh, hit the, uh, the pedals, really. There are three pedals um, on the uh, docking port itself um, that the capture ring will essentially interact with. And it's almost like two hands grasping each other um, to get that initial capture. And then that docking ring will start to retract. And that'll bring Dragon a little bit closer in. And that'll allow it to then engage a series of hooks. There are 12 hooks, two yanks of six, uh, that will engage to essentially do a hard mate. And um, once those are engaged, um, you essentially have a vacuum tight seal between Dragon and Station. And you have an area that right now is exposed to vacuum on both vehicles, uh, but will be uh, sealed away from the space flight environment itself. And that will be called the vestibule, and that's the area that the crew will pressurize. They'll actually just open a valve on the station side that will start to flow some atmosphere into that area. Uh, and we'll do a couple of pauses throughout that. Um, they'll do leak checks to make sure no leaks on the dragon side or the station side, uh, eventually bringing that up to uh, essentially the same pressure you have on board station and dragon, about 14.7 PSI, before we start to get the hatches open and cargo to come out. But for now, we are just about 20 seconds away from waypoint one. We'll stand by, wait for confirmation that we've passed through that. We're a little over 20, 225 meters away. Um, so again, expecting about 220 um, to be our final distance before we pass through waypoint one coming up shortly. Houston Station on two, vehicle mode is approached to a line point. Range continues decreasing, attitude as expected. Copy all. And that call from Woody Hoberg in confirmation by teams here in Mission Control Houston Dragon has passed waypoint one. And so it's now closing in. We're about to pass uh, inside of that keep out sphere. So Dragon already uh, just about to cross that 200 meter threshold as it's now continuing on to waypoint two. And that's a, a spot just 20 meters away from the docking port um, where again, we'll be able to do a final pause, do a final alignment um, and then move through that pretty quickly as we're continuing to track no issues on the Dragon side, no issues on the station side, um, and everything continuing to run ahead of schedule. So as long as we continue to move through pretty quickly, we're expecting uh, the docking to happen in just about 11 minutes from now um, at about 6.28 a.m. Central Time. Uh, before we get there, we'll have to pass through waypoint two, which is coming up in about nine and a half minutes. So at that point, we'll be, again, just 20 meters away, and we'll be doing that final um, that final alignment with the docking port. During this approach, Dragon not trying to stay perfectly lined up uh, with the station. It essentially has a range uh, that the crew's watching, um, and uh, there's 
kind of a cone that gets drawn out where we want to make sure dragon's staying inside of that cone um, before it hits that final waypoint too when we do the final alignment. Um, the teams here in Houston and out at MCCX are going to do a kind of a final go no go uh, in a little less than seven minutes. That'll be the last one we do essentially giving the authority to proceed with docking. Um, so that'll come up shortly uh, just about two minutes before we actually hit waypoint two and then we'll look to move through waypoint two and then into the final steps. Uh, of approach and docking. Again, we're, we're heading into the forward port of Node 2, the Harmony module, um, where it's going to be hitting uh, and Dragon is going to be staying docked for about a month, uh, delivering more than 6,000 pounds of supplies, hardware to the Expedition 68 crew. Some of that external in Dragon's trunk that's going to be removed robotically, uh, but a lot of that packed into the pressurized section of Dragon, both in uh, including supplies, um, just general provisions for the crew. There's uh, some fresh food items for them as these uh, cargo deliveries really the only access they get to a lot of fresh food. Um, so definitely something the crew members look forward to. Um, but more than anything, this kicks off just a really intense period of activity uh, for the astronauts as once Dragon docks, a timer is essentially started where a lot of the experiments on board have to be brought off, executed, and loaded back on before Dragon comes back a month from now. Uh, but continuing just a quick ops check-in, we're about five and a half minutes away from our final go-no-go -no -go here in Houston, and then we should hit waypoint two in about seven and a half minutes. Still expecting docking about 20 minutes ahead of schedule at about 6.28 a.m. Central Time, but we'll get you an exact time once we make that initial contact in capture. Station Houston on 2, want to confirm that you have reviewed steps 5 and 6 and are ready for ducking. Nicole, great timing. You read our minds. We just finished our review and crew is ready for docking. Awesome. Happy to hear it. And also just want to confirm you've got a third crew member to monitor those SM advisories. Yep, we'll take care of that, Nicole, and we've got advisories on on the PCS. Copy that.
And so right now, Dragon less than 100 meters away. We're a little inside two minutes from that final go-no-go. -no -go. We should be hitting waypoint two in about three minutes, 40 seconds from now. Then expected docking just five minutes away. So Dragon definitely getting in close. You're seeing it really come into view. Um, just some of the different items that you're looking at. So you're, you're looking at the very top. Uh, the nose cone of Dragon obviously opened and off to the lower right of the spacecraft. Uh, those four holes you're seeing, those are where the forward bulkhead thrusters are located. And then um, we can't see them because of the exposure, but your primary navigation elements are in that, uh, essentially that nose ring, um, including uh, the LIDAR. So there's a, a better view. You can see um, those uh, smaller holes in the top left part. Those are where a lot of your really sensitive navigation pieces of equipment are, including uh, the Dragon Eyes, which are using uh, laser range finders to, to, help, uh, to help Dragon navigate its final approach. We're not using those forward bulkhead thrusters for any of these final approach maneuvers. We're using uh, the clusters of Dracos around the, uh, the base of the capsule itself, and so you'll occasionally see those fire. Station Houston on two for situation awareness at waypoint two. Dragon will briefly pause to align for docking and then automatically resume approach. Station copies. Thanks for that awareness. Capcom Nicole Lewis giving Woody Hoberg on board the station a quick heads up. So uh, the Mission Control Houston team has reported they are go for final approach and docking. And so we're less than two minutes away. Dragon will hit that waypoint number two, and it'll be just 20 meters away. It's going to pause just to do a final alignment. Again, we're not doing a final alignment with that docking port until we get this close in. Just again, otherwise you'd essentially be doing it the whole way in addition to approaching. So just the easiest way to conserve on propellant is saving it until you're essentially in much closer to the station itself. Um, so in a little over a minute, Dragon will pause about 20 meters away. And it'll do its final alignment and then it's going to automatically begin approaching the station. So uh, docking should be coming up in just a couple of minutes. We could be inside three minutes away from docking. We'll get you that exact time uh, once we make that initial contact with the docking port on the forward end of node two. And we see Dragon start to slow down as it hits waypoint two. And we're going to see it pause here. You're going to see thruster firings pick up a little bit as it hits this pause point, and it'll enter into its final alignment to, to really line up uh, with the docking port itself. And confirmation we're holding at waypoint two. So Dragon now going to maneuver itself slightly just to line up with that docking port. And then it's going to very auto, it's going to automatically start to approach. And so we can see through the center line camera, it's going to line itself up. We're looking right at the business end of the international docking adapter on the forward port of node two. And in just a couple of seconds, once Dragon's finished lining itself up, we're going to see that range rate start to uh, tick up again, and we're going to see it start to approach.
Station Houston on two, mode is approached to docking port, range is inside 20 meters and decreasing attitude as expected. Copy all, Dragon is on final approach and is go for docking. Monitor for steps 5 and 6 in 1.102. Copy, cruise and step fast. All right, so Dragon past waypoint two, it's in its final approach. So we are inside 20 meters. We're actually inside 17 already at this point. Um, so just a couple of minutes away now from docking. We'll see those thrusters continue to fire just as Dragon maintains that precise alignment. Uh, just, again, about 25 seconds or so beforehand, we'll hear the call out for CHOP, crew hands off point. Just, again, giving the notification to the crew that we're close enough that they should not be sending abort commands, as it would just be needed to handle, or it would need to be handled by the vehicle itself. So, should be seen docking in just a few minutes, uh, potentially in about three minutes from now. Um, but we'll continue to stand by and give you an exact time once Dragon makes contact with the International Space Station. Dragon inside of 10 meters away. So we should 10 meters, all errors less than half a degree. Copy all. Woody Hoberg confirming less than 10 meters away and talking the, the error bands um, all green. So that's essentially just meaning Dragon continues to be well in control of itself and in good alignment as it approaches this docking port. Expecting docking in about 90 seconds. Five meters to go. Hands off point. Copy, crew hands off. Crew is hands off. We are less than two meters away. Dragon contact and soft capture complete. And capture confirmed at 6.31 a.m. Central Time, 7.31 a.m. Eastern, while Dragon and Station flew 261 statute miles over northeastern Fish China. Copy. The vehicle's linking up right as the station was flying over the border between China and Russia. But again, that time, 6.31 a.m. Central, 7.31 a.m. Eastern, a docking 261 statute miles over northeastern China. So uh, that's that initial contact and capture. Now the docking sequence will continue. 
Um, so the docking ring is going to ring start retraction in progress. And getting the confirmation there that the ring retraction has started. So this is going to start bringing the vehicle in a little bit closer, bit by bit, until it's uh, essentially locked up with the docking adapter itself. And that will allow us to start engaging the hard capture system. So that's done through a series of 12 hooks, uh, done six by six. And that's what's going to firmly hold Dragon in place. Um, and essentially pull us in enough so we have an airtight seal between the Dragon and the station side, creating what's known as the vestibule, that space between the Dragon hatch uh, and the hatch on the station side, um, known as the A-pass hatch. And so once that's completed, we'll also uh, deploy two umbilicals that are going to connect Dragon's data uh, and power systems into station and allow it to start just feeding off station systems while it's docked to the orbiting lab and that will complete our docking sequence. That all takes uh, about 12 to 13 minutes or so final or following uh, that initial capture. Um, but right now we're just waiting for the docking ring to finish retracting and then we'll start getting ready to deploy those hooks. But again, if you missed it, the docking happening at 6.31 a.m. Central Time, 7.31 a.m. Eastern, with Dragon Station flying 261 statute miles over northeastern China. So with that, uh, we now have two Dragons again docked to the space station. It's going to be like this for the next month. Um, in total, uh, six different vehicles currently attached to the station now um, with uh, one Soyuz and one Progress, or rather two Soyuz and one Progress over on the Russian segment. Uh, Cygnus's 18th commercial resupply mission still docked to the Earth-facing uh, port on Node 1, and then a, both a crew and a cargo version of Dragon. So a couple of minutes now um, until we get these hooks in place and the uh, docking sequence will be completed. Uh, but everything completed right, uh, right as expected, actually getting a little bit ahead of the timeline, docking a little less than 20 minutes before we were originally anticipating, uh, but a flawless flight uphill and docking uh, for this Dragon on the 27th resupply mission for SpaceX. So again, right now, the docking ring uh, in the mechanism onboard Dragon still retracting. Once that's completed, uh, we'll get ready to start engaging uh, the hooks. There's 12 of them that are going to engage uh, to secure Dragon to the international docking adapter. And so we're going we're gonna to see those get deployed. Um, in two different sets. Uh, first set of six will engage, and then the second set of six will, after uh, that first set is already locked in, and then we'll have 12 hooks securing Dragon to the station itself. So again, if you're just now tuning in, you missed the exciting part. Ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. Station copies. You missed the exciting part, but Dragon uh, already made that initial contact and capture. Now we're waiting for the docking sequence to be completed. So the, the docking ring has retracted. And now uh, MCCX, the flight controllers, out at SpaceX, Mission Control, and Hawthorne. And MCS is configured. Proceeding with hook driving.
and the call from the Capcom right there, the MCS being configured, that's the motion control system on board the station. Essentially, we just need to make sure make sure the means we controlled the we use to control the attitude on station on their or in their proper configuration. Uh, for hook driving, it's really to make sure that the thrusters on the Russian segment are disabled, as any in inadvertent firing of those thrusters um, could potentially interrupt or uh, cause issues with the the ring deploy during Dragon. So just getting stationed in the right configuration and with the MCS, the motion control system now configured, uh, we'll start to see those rings deploy uh, again six. Six in the first set, six in the second, and the dragon will be attached to the station. And getting confirmation that the first set of hooks are traveling. So six hooks driving now. It'll take a couple of minutes, and then once they're in place, the next set of six hooks will drive and then we'll have Dragon secured. It'll have uh, a couple of other steps deploying two umbilicals um, before uh, we are essentially fully fully done with the docking sequence but once these hooks are in place Dragon will be securely mated to the station. Um, and meanwhile on board the station so uh, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg was monitoring throughout all of this final approach. Um, he's going to start to uh, tear down some of the tools that he used, the laptops um, that he used to monitor Dragon during his final approach, and then is going to get ready to uh, do everything on the station side to get Dragon ready for, for ingress, for the crew to actually start moving in. Um, one of the, the major things that has to happen is going to be pressurizing the vestibule, so that's the space between the Dragon and the station hatches. Previously, that was just exposed to vacuum. Still a vacuum environment in there right now. Um, as we're just essentially creating a sealed environment right now, though. Um, and then uh, Woody Hoberg will be able to open a valve on the station side to slowly flow some atmosphere from the station stack into that vestibule area. So we need to bring that up to uh, the same atmospheric pressure as we have with the rest of the station and inside Dragon before we start opening up hatches. Um, they'll typically uh, pause at about halfway up to that appropriate pressure, which is 14.7 PSI, just to do leak checks is, again, as you're introducing the atmosphere, you're changing not just the pressure inside, but thermal conditions. And um, as things heat up, your pressure can rise. So you want to make sure that uh, the pressure readings you're getting are actually based off of how much volume of atmosphere is actually in there, and not just thermal changes. Um, so they'll pause to essentially allow things to equalize for a few minutes. Uh, and then conduct leak checks both on the Dragon side and the station side, make sure we don't have any leaks um, in the vestibule um, before we begin feeding additional atmosphere through. And then once that's brought fully up to essentially the same uh, pressure as the station stack, he'll be able to open this, the hatch on the station side and then open up the hatch on the Dragon side. But right now, the hook process continuing, the first set of six have been engaged. The second set are driving and standing by for hard capture complete.
card capture complete. Right, and with that... Station copies, and Nicole, just let me know when I have your go for uh, step one of the next procedure. Copy that, we'll keep you posted. And so with that call from the Capcom here, Nicole Lewis and Mission Control Houston, hard capture is complete, all 12 hooks have engaged. Firmly attaching SpaceX Dragon to the forward port on node 2 and completing our docking process for today. Um, so if you missed it, again, just to recap, Dragon docked successfully at 6.31 a.m. Central Time, 7.31 a.m. Eastern, while both Dragon and Station were flying 261 statute miles over the northeastern part of China, bringing the 27th resupply mission for SpaceX to the station. We Hoberg was on board monitoring Dragon, which moved through all of its different burns and checkpoints ahead of schedule, docking about 21 minutes earlier than expected uh, per the pre-flight timeline. Uh, but with that, uh, a lot of activity now kicking off for the crew. They're going to start uh, pressurizing that vestibule, that space between Dragon uh, and the space station itself before they get ready to open up the hatches and begin cargo operations later today. Dragon's expected to stay docked for about 30 days, departing later on in April where the crew is going to be repacking it full of cargo and science experiments to then get delivered back down here to the ground. But with Dragon successfully docked, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our coverage today. Thank you for following along with the final stages of Dragon's rendezvous and docking with the International Space Station, kicking off uh, again another busy month, but another successful cargo delivery to the station itself.